Dionne Warwick was one of the most successful recording artists of all time. Her songs, including Say a Little Prayer, Anyone Who Had a Heart, and Deja Vu, are just a few of her hits in a catalog that spans over four decades. By the way, if you like Deja Vu, you're gonna love my remix called Took Your Loot. Stay tuned for that number one hit that's sweeping the nation. Took your loot. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, that's just a teaser. Anyway, the money from her songs kept Dionne Warwick living a very comfortable lifestyle for a very long time. But when her music career faded, she moved into more sketchy areas to make money. One of them was her AIDS charity. The other one we'll talk about in the second part of this video next week. Let's get into the Charity Foundation now. But first, if you like these videos about your favorite and most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear that make the Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream and comment I subscribed in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. To start at the beginning of Dionne Warwick's charity work, as far as raising big money for them is concerned, we'll go to the hit song, That's What Friends Are For. The version that most of us know was released in 1985, and it was a celebrity-filled effort. Here's the quick story on that. Burt Bacharach, who had written so many songs for Dionne Warwick, wrote this song for the 1982 movie Night Shift, where it was recorded originally by Rod Stewart and played over the closing credits. Burt Bacharach wrote the song with Carol Bayer Sager, who, fun fact, also teamed up with him to write On My Own by Patti LaBelle and Michael McDonald. It was Carol Bayer Sager who suggested that Dionne Warwick record That's What Friends Are For, but when Dionne heard it, she envisioned it as a duet with Stevie Wonder. So Dionne put down her tracks, and then Stevie Wonder arrived to do his part. When he was recording, Elizabeth Taylor and Neil Simon dropped by. Knowing of Elizabeth Taylor's commitment to AIDS research, Carol Sager suggested that they make the song a charity effort, and everyone agreed that it was a great idea. They decided to add another singer to the mix, so Gladys Knight was invited. The last piece of the puzzle was Elton John, who was suggested by Clive Davis, head of Arista Records, as Arista was the label that released the single. You can't go wrong with that lineup, and they didn't. But did you know this? As smooth as that song sounds, each vocalist recorded her or his own part separately. The producers fused all the verses and ad-libs together, and the four vocalists never met up except for to record the music video. The foursome released the single under the name Dion and Friends. They recorded That's What Friends Are For as a single to raise money for the American Foundation for AIDS Research, also called by its abbreviated name, AMFAR. AIDS was a widely misunderstood disease in 1985, and this recording helped draw attention to the cause and educate people about the disease. Proceeds from the song raised over $500,000 for AMFAR. Dionne Warwick was one of the first artists to reach out to the AIDS community by recording this song. She is quoted as saying, quote, it was kind of given to the problem itself to raise funds and awareness. Those who felt they didn't want to be involved with it, to be seen giving money or being heard talking about the crisis, that song was an avenue to reach out without any stigma, end quote. From there, in 1989, Dionne Warwick founded her own AIDS charity called the Warwick Foundation, of which she was the spokesperson. Warwick and the charity were praised for working to stave off the AIDS epidemic in underserved communities. That praise didn't last long. By 1991, ABC News revealed that almost all of the millions of dollars raised by her charity went to administrative costs, not AIDS-related charity work. Large portions of the quote-unquote administrative costs included lavish travel accommodations and expensive meals for Dionne Warwick and her associates, not to be confused with Dionne and friends. In 1993, Forrest Sawyer, host of the ABC News entertainment program Day One, did a huge expose piece on Dionne Warwick. 
It alleged financial improprieties by the Warwick Foundation and particularly Dionne Warwick's charity concert performances organized to benefit the organization as America's Ambassador of Health. The Network News Magazine story was called, That's What Friends Are For, and it reported that the Warwick Foundation was operating at over 90% administrative costs, donating only about 3% of the money that it raised to actually support AIDS groups. Several AIDS charities and nonprofit experts criticized her foundation, including an AIDS charity in the Virgin Islands that claimed Dionne Warwick nearly bankrupted them after her extravagant expenses for herself and her entourage left absolutely nothing for the local charities that Dionne's foundation was supposed to support. Forrest Sawyer reported that Dionne Warwick flew first class and was accommodated at five-star luxury hotels for charity concerts and events in which she participated on behalf of the Warwick Foundation. Only making her entire operation to appear to be even more shady, it was also exposed that the Warwick Foundation was managed by her close confidant, Guy Draper, a former chief of protocol for former Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry who, in addition to being known for getting busted on drug violations, also had a history of bankruptcies. Forrest Sawyer's report was a hard-hitting piece of news. Dionne Warwick didn't like it, and she had some words to say about it. She alleged that the ABC report was racially motivated and threatened to sue ABC News for defamation. The threat ended up being just that, a threat only, and a lawsuit was never filed. The Internal Revenue Service began an investigation of the Warwick Foundation after other complaints were filed. No criminal charges were brought up against her, but the Warwick Foundation had to be dissolved. And public opinion seemed to show that the people believed the ABC News Day One story. ABC's story was nominated for a National Emmy Award in 1994 and it won a prestigious Investigative Reporters and Editors National Television Award in 1993. Now, let me know, do you think that Dionne Warwick was taking money from her foundation to fund her lavish lifestyle? Or do you think that there was some type of agenda against her, a smear campaign, if you will? Maybe before you answer that, you'll want to hear part two of the Dionne Warwick scamming and scheming saga. Next week, we'll have another story about an alleged scam that Dionne Work was involved with and her financial hardships that came after these two scandals. In the meantime, check out my Deja Vu remix that's sure to be number one in the nation. This one is called Took Your Loot. <laughs> Could this be a scheme I like to do? Dun -dun -dun -dun. Steal from you. Bim -bim -bim. Took your loot. Bim -bim -bim. Could me and my team have stole from you? Bim -bim -bim. Why you want a boo? Bim -bim -bim. I does some money from him. Dun -dun -dun -dun. I does some money from you. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Took your loot. Alright, sing it with me. Da, 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 Took your loot. Could this be a scheme I like to do? Da, 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 Steal from you. Da, da, da. Took your loot. Da, da, da. Could me and my team have stole from you? Da, 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 da. Why you find a boo? My sources for this video are Psychology Today, ABC News, and The Daily Mail UK. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. 
And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.